Hey guys, Tuesday morning's devotion. Hope you're having a great morning and an even better day about to come. Uh, yesterday we were talking about Christian conduct in Philippians 1.27. He says, this one thing is necessary. One thing is necessary in the world today for the church, and that is that we behave like Christians by way of conversation, by way of conduct. And we spoke yesterday about by way of unity in the church. We are united. We don't always behave like it, but Jesus has said, we are one. He prayed for that. His prayer was answered. Now, I want to talk about this oneness. The unity speaks of one accord. It says in verse 27 that you would be united in one accord. There's something about being united in one thing. The one thing, thing that needs to matter. There are lots of things that we can be diverse on. There are lots of things that we can have difference in, differences on. But the one thing, thing is that God should be glorified. Now, this is what should draw us to himself. This is what should not just draw us to God, but should draw us together at the same time, making us united in, in Christ. I saw a, a beautiful illustration of this the other day. Uh, watched a rugby game. I think it was actually between the Pumas and the Sharks. Uh, and uh, at the end of the post-match interviews, there there were obviously a lot of a lot of Christians in the Puma side, and uh, it was a it was a great game. And they were interviewing the captain, and they asked the captain, "What is a talk to us about team spirit? What is this team spirit thing that you guys so apparently had?" And uh, all he said was this, "For His glory." And I go, "Is that it?" He said, "That's it." For his glory. You mean you play the whole game for his glory? You don't play for money. You don't pray, play for ego. You play simply for his glory. And I thought about that. Wouldn't that be a cool motto for life that we live for his glory? Now, that's a good thing to do. And when you do that one thing, a whole lot of other things become either unnecessary or really, really easy to do. I'm sure every training practice that those young men went to for their rugby was one thing for his glory. I'll do whatever I have to. I'll run. I'll press ups. I'll do sit ups. I'll do scrumming over and over again because I know why I'm doing it. I'm doing it for his glory. So many people get hung up on the drudgery of some of the things that they perceive are drudgery issues. They're not drudgery issues if we're doing them for the right reason. If we're doing them for his glory, everything else takes on a completely new light. Now I mentioned yesterday about probably one of the greatest criticisms of the church is this thing about um, disunity. This church has this kind of thing and this church holds to that kind of thing and this church will split hairs over what kind of music we should have. This church will split hairs over how long the sermon should be and oh man it could be it could be an exhausting exhausting thing. And I wonder how God feels when he looks down at his children and at the church that he loves so much and he sees us polarizing over the stupidest, stupidest things. Let me tell you people, if you're in one of those camps, then I have to tell you, when you get to heaven one day, there's going to be no discussions about those peripheral, stupid little things that we split and divide churches over. God wants us to be united. We are united. I think he just wants us to behave like it. Let's, let's fight over issues of principle if we have to, but let's make sure that for His glory, everything is said and everything is done. I'm a bit of an idealist, and I, I just have this, this strange ideal. Some people would say it's way uh, wacko. But imagine if you woke up on a Sunday morning and somebody said to you, so, so where are you going today? And you said, I'm going to church because there's only one church. I'm not going to the Baptist church. I'm not going to the Presbyterian church. I'm not going to the Brethren church. I'm not going to whatever. I'm just going to church. We often diversify and differentiate ourselves, and sometimes we have to do that. I'm not being so naive. But I just want to know that we go for the right reason, that we are united, that we don't backstab one another. We don't criticize one another as churches. We don't think that our church is better than your church and your Man, I've got to tell you, God must weep because God has declared we're a family. Can you imagine that happening in a family, how tragic that would be? Oh, have you seen what he did? Have you seen what he's... Man, we've got to stop that stuff. We've got to st he talks about us as being a body. 
Can you imagine if the body had the hand over there, the leg over there, the head over there? The, you know, imagine that body would be functionless. It would not be able to do anything simply because it's disunified or deunified, whatever the word is. I don't know. But people, let's be united. Let's act united. Let's talk united. Let's live out to the glory of God. And if we do, people listen carefully. If we do that one thing. If we just live for His glory, whatever we do to do it to His glory, as we said a couple of weeks back, everything else becomes easier to do or maybe sometimes unnecessary. Have a great day and love the church. They are God's best on this planet. Thanks, team. Have a good day. Let's go save the world, man.